Hello and welcome to One Minute Theatre Reviews. I'm Paul Seven Lewis, this is the National Theatre, and I'm here to see The Crucible. The Crucible is about the late uh, 17th century witch trials in Salem, Massachusetts, but when Arthur Miller wrote his play in the early 1950s, he no doubt had in mind the McCarthy witch hunt of that time, when a US senator persecuted perceived communists, especially in Hollywood. But it could be about any time when the authorities demonise others to consolidate their power. It's a powerful study in how the process develops a momentum of its own and triggers vengeance, fear and even mass hysteria. And this National Theatre production is powerfully acted by Aaron Doherty, uh, Brendan Cowell and others and helped by a stark, consuming black and white set. Well, that's the one minute review, but I've a lot more to talk about, so please keep watching. So what is The Crucible about? Well, in a small town run by the church, some misbehaving girls try to get off the hook by claiming to be possessed by the devil. This gets out of hand as they take the opportunity to get their own back on some respectable and respected citizens by accusing them of being disciples of the devil who enticed them. A trial ensues. Adults confess to outlandish encounters with demons. More accusations fly, more adults confess. The historical trial is often said to have been marked by mass hysteria. In this play, the girls are led by Abigail, given a bravura performance by Erin Doherty. Now, you might know her best as Princess Anne in The Crown, but she's very different here. Uh, she's clearly a rebel, but also scheming. And we see her wheedling, pleading, and in a terrifying scene, inspiring the other girls in the village into uncontrolled, shaking, and wild-eyed semblance of possession. But there are many themes explored in Arthur Miller's complex play. Authoritarian power is uh, one, and, and everything else really springs from that. Um, as we enter the Olivier Auditorium, we're confronted by pouring rain, and every scene begins with pouring rain, torrents of water teeming onto the front of the stage. It seems this community is already suffering the punishment of a pitiless Old Testament God. We're told it's a theocracy. No separation then between church and state. The church is in charge and there can be no challenge to its authority. The church leader, Reverend Paris, is confronted by children rebelling against the church's rules by secretly dancing, among other things. Now, some of the citizens believe this behaviour has been caused by the devil in the form of witchcraft. The priest is at first sceptical, but he knows support for him in the community is shaky, so he calls in a preacher with higher authority and a knowledge of witchcraft, the Reverend Hale. A major trial follows, headed by Deputy Governor Danforth, who has his own reasons for wanting to stamp his authority on the community. At this point, it's a case of, to a hammer, everything is a nail. As the witch hunt goes to extremes in the heat of the crucible, both Harris and Paris and Hale begin to see how one-sided the trial is. And they're given passionate, nuanced performances by Nick Fletcher and Fiseo Akinade, respectively. The two priests see that good people are being dragged down and note that every defence is seen as an attack on the court. One man who tries to defend his wife is John Proctor, in a thundering bit of acting by Brendan Cowell. A good but flawed man, he nobly tries to reason with the court and is brought down by his honesty and the challenge he poses to the church's teachings. It's a touching, more than that, a heartbreaking performance. What else is going on? Well, oppression of women by the church. They're expected to be silent and obedient, and the girls are indoctrinated by tales of hellfire and damnation, so they're primed for believing they've been taken over by unseen forces, and they have a ready-made means of excusing themselves. And then there's fear, people turning on each other to save themselves, and revenge. The girls are only too quick to denounce the many adults they resent. And inevitably, greedy, ruthless people take the opportunity to gain land from those guilty of, or found guilty of witchcraft. Oh, and there's a lot more going on than this in, a, in this frightening play. And we can see many parallels uh, more modern than the McCarthyite witch trials. Uh, we can see what goes on in all totalitarian countries where a weak authority makes sure that it can't be questioned. 
the actions of the morality police in Iran spring to mind. Or would-be totalitarians closer to home, for whom an alternative point of view or a minor misdemeanour can ignite outrage on social media, leading to death threats and cancellation. The production's well served by its director, Lindsay Turner. Nearly all the characters point their fingers as they argue, a metaphor, finger pointing, made physical. And the set by S. Devlin is appropriately black and white, except when we visit the Proctor's warmer coloured home. The further back you go on the stage, the less space there is, suggesting oppression, as does the plain uh, false ceiling. Uh, crucial to the production are Tim Lutkin's lighting and the sound by Caroline Shaw, Ting Ying Dong and Paul Aditi. The cast are usually lit from the side, uh, creating a light and shadow chiaroscuro effect, again suggesting no middle ground. A stretched, low note, drones in the background, ratcheting up the tension. All in all, an important play, a terrific production and impressive performances, only marred by a tendency at times towards melodrama. But I'm happy to give The Crucible four stars. I hope you've uh, enjoyed this review, or at least found it useful, and if you did, why not subscribe to my YouTube channel, and you'll be the first to know about my future reviews. You can also follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and if you want to read my reviews, go to oneminutetheatrereviews.co.uk. Thank you for watching.